Hare Krishna. Welcome to the Bhagavad Gita class. So we are on the ninth chapter and we will continue where we left off last week. So before we get started, let us recite the Mangalacharan prayers, the prayers that invoke auspiciousness, blessings of previous Acharyas and Lord Krishna so that we can understand Bhagavad Gita nicely, not only understand, but retain it as well. So these prayers are in the Bhagavad Gita itself, the Bhagavad Gita as it is introduction, and we will recite from here. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Soyam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutah Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinapanto Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jaye, Srila Prabhupada ki jaye. Okay. So. <coughs> I'll share the slides. Okay. So, we will continue from 9.27. So, 9.26 we covered in detail last time. And from there, Lord Krishna begins to describe really the very sweet and uh, important aspects of his bhakti. So very quickly to recap where we left off, 9.26, Lord Krishna is saying that loving me is so simple. And all he is saying is in contrast to doing all these big, big sacrifices for various devatas and all for some little benefit, my bhakti is so simple and the result is so great. So it's like, you know, the input is very small, the output is infinite. In all other situations, you have to do great amount of input and you get little bit of output. So the intelligent thing to do is Krishna Bhakti. That is the point he is trying to make very, very, very strongly. So he's saying putram, not putram, patram pushpam phalam toyam. These are the only four things you need. And these are abundantly available in nature. Even probably 10,000 years from now, there should not be a shortage of obtaining these four items. Okay. And phalam also, he's not saying, give me a mango or give me the best phala. Simple fruit, simple. And there's an or, just water is enough. There's so much water in the 
world. So basically the point is that uh, Krishna Bhakti is very, very simple. The only important and key ingredient is love. And that will always be there in one's heart. Or it can be there. So it doesn't matter whether any item is there or not. If love is there, the point is he is saying, I will accept the pettiest of things. And then he says that you don't need to change anything. So this is where we will start. We covered a little bit of this quickly last time. We will start from here. Yad Karoshi, whatever you do. Yad Ashnashi, whatever you eat. Whatever you eat. Yad Juhoshi, whatever you give. Whatever sacrifices you perform. Dadasiyat. Yad Tapasyasi, what austerities, whatever you perform. Konteya Tad Kurushwa Madarpanam. That is the main point. Basically, don't change anything. Almost. Why the almost? Just do whatever you're doing. Add love to it. Okay, then it becomes complete. Today, whatever we are doing, we are doing for our own benefit. Now we do it as a seva, as a service for Krishna. So, tad kurushva mad arpanam. Do it as a arpanam, as a offering to mad arpanam, to me. So that's very simple, right? What is the meaning of the almost? The almost is that the action need not be great, but the love needs to be great. That's all that we need to change. So there is change needed. It's not that just keep doing what you're doing. Then Bhagavad Gita is irrelevant. Why we are reading Bhagavad Gita if nothing has to change? So... That is the only change that we need to do in our life. To do whatever we are doing. Now again, almost also means not any really sinful activities. So those should be avoided. But in general, mostly all the activities that we are doing, Lord Krishna is not asking us to abandon that. Okay. Give me one second. Hmm. Then in nine point, we'll go slowly through all these verses. The last, it goes up to 9.34. This is the most important section. So today I didn't put this in the message, the WhatsApp message, but this today's class is covering the most important verses of Bhagavad Gita. The last 26 to 34, nine verses are the most important verses of Bhagavad Gita, where you really are able to understand Krishna's mind, how he thinks, the mind of a, the heart, mind and heart of a father towards his son, a loving father towards his son. Okay. So, what is he saying? What's the result of doing this? If you do this, make small offerings to me. An offering is not like he is needing that offering. It's a token of love. Okay? Like a father, if he brings a box of chocolates for the child, he could have bought one box for himself as well. He's a very rich father. So it's not like he is hungry for the chocolate from the box he has given to the child. But if the child takes out one of the chocolate and say that you have also, let's have together. The father is extremely happy with that gesture, even though he may have had a whole box, bigger box in the car for himself and for his own, you know, friends and whatever party. But when the child takes it out from his box, that it has been given by the father himself. The father feels very, very happy. So it's not the chocolate that's important. It's the fact that he took it out from the box, gave it to him. It's a small sacrifice. That's one less chocolate that the son will eat. So it's a sacrifice. That is what is called yad tapasyasi. It's a little bit of an austerity, tapasya. One less chocolate, isn't it? Child wants to eat all of them, but one less as a token of love. So, 
what Lord Krishna is saying is that you don't need to do great things, just small things you do. The most important thing is the love. And what Krishna is giving in return to such a loving child, two main results, which he says in 9.28. First is that whatever activities you are doing now, so far we have studied Bhagavad Gita, we have seen every action produces a reaction, isn't it? Good action produces a sweet reaction. Bad action produces a sour reaction. So either you enjoy the good reaction or you suffer the bad reaction. Correct? Punya and Papa. That's the law of karma. Isn't it? So this action, whatever you are doing, there is so much action in this 27th verse, isn't it? Yad Karoshi, you are doing something. Yad Ashnashi, you are eating something. Yad Juhoshi, whatever sacrifice you are doing. All these things, Yad Dadasi, Dadasi Yad, whatever you are giving, there's got to be some reaction to it. All these are good activities, by the way. So there's got to be a lot of Punya reaction. But so far we have learned from Bhagavad Gita that it's not good to accumulate reactions. Then you have to stay in this material world to enjoy it. And of course, if you do Papa, of course you have to stay here to suffer. That's, uh, you know, that's more easily understandable by people. But even good reactions, you have to suffer. But we don't want that. So why is Krishna asking you to do this? Because if you do it as Madarpanam, Krishna says, you do not get any karmic reactions. I absolve you. Doing those same things, if you do it for yourself, you get reactions. But if you do it for me, for yourself or your friends or family, in any case, you do it for anyone else, you get reactions. If you do it for me, no reaction. So this is a completely different kind of action. It's called a karma. But again, this is a whole different category of action. There is action involved. But Lord Krishna is clearly saying, Shubha Ashubha Phal. Whether it is pious or good or bad, no reaction at all. Moksha se karma bandhana. You get relief from any kind of karma bandhan. Karma bandhan means karmic reaction. So that's first result. And even more, even more, the second result is you come to me. He clearly says, Vimukto maam upaishyasi. Maam, Vimukto, you get rid of this material world. Maam upaishyasi, you come to me. All right. So these are the two main results of doing activities or action, but as a offering to Krishna as an act of bhakti. That is nothing but act of bhakti. Correct? Are you with me? And then he says, now again, this is chapter 9 is all about love. It is all about bhakti. So, there is an even greater result than this. How many of you think this is good enough? No karma bandhana. Complete relief from all reaction, karmic reaction. And you go to Krishna. Can there be anything greater than this? Hmm? Can there be anything greater than that? There is. You want to know? So, that is in 9.29. Very important verse. Those who are doing Bhakti Shastri and all, this is a memorized memorization verse. Very important verse. And the previous two results pale in front of this one. All right. So what he says, Lord Krishna, Sammoham Sarva Bhuteshu Name Dveshyo Asti Na Priyaha. So the Lord is neutral to all living entities. That's what he is saying. Sammoham. Sammoham means sam aham. I am sama. Sama means what? Equal. Or I treat everybody equally. Well, he is God. Everybody is his child. Isn't it? So everybody, you know, he is neutral. Na me dveshyo asti na priyaha. Dvesha means? Hatred. Priya means? Love. 
So na is there in both. Na me dveshyo asti, I am or I do. Na priyaha, neither do I love anybody extra, neither do I hate anybody extra, which means basically he's re repeating the same point. I am sama, sammo aham sarva bhuteshu. Are you clear on this? So he's neutral to everyone. Isn't that? So that's, that's fine. But there is a but. Tu. Every verse which has a tu. Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya. Do you notice the tu there? Very important. There is a but. But means there is an exception. Even in science, you can learn all the formulas, but don't you have to remember the exceptions? They are the more important ones. All the exam questions come on the exceptions. Isn't it? So, what is Lord Krishna saying? Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya. To his devotees, he is severely partial. How is he partial? Maam bhaktya to my devotees. Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya. Those my bhaktas who are doing my bhajan. What does he say? Mai te teshu. Mai. They are in my heart. Mai te teshu. They are always in my heart. Cha api aham. And I am in their heart. This is way more sweeter and a higher uh, result or higher thing to be had than going to him and, you know, or getting rid of karma. You live in Krishna's heart. And Krishna resides, makes your heart his residence. So, you know, Hanumanji is the best example. There's a story one time that when Vibhishan came to Lord Ram and took his shelter, isn't it? So what did Lord Ram say? Yes. That I will make you the king of Lanka, isn't it? He doesn't want anything for himself, Lord Ram. He could have said, I will become the king of Lanka. Lanka was a very rich place at that time. He says, I will make you the king of Lanka. Then Sugriva, he was little, you know, doubtful. He said, hey, you are giving him Lanka? What if Ravan comes and says, I also want to... He is the present king of Lanka, isn't it? So he says, what if Ravan comes and says, I also take your shelter. Then you have nothing left to give him. Isn't it? He said, no problem. I will give him Ayodhya. Achha? You will give Ayodhya to Ravan. So who is the present, uh, who is ruling Ayodhya? Huh? Bharat. He says, if Bharat comes, and takes complete shelter. He's already taken complete shelter, but he says, then what will you give him? I will give him Vaikuntha. Achha, you will give him Vaikuntha? But who is the present ruler of Vaikuntha? Lord Ram himself. Are you, there you are the ruler. So, apka kya hoga? Aap to, you will become homeless. You have given your home. He says, no problem. I will go and live in Hanuman's heart. That is my permanent residence. That I will not give to anyone. That I cannot give to anyone. That is my private residence. Are you following? So that is the primary residence of Bhagwan. All these other residences, whether it is Ayodhya, whether it is Vaikuntha, or any other place, these are actually temporary residences of Bhagwan. So the previous verse which was being said is you come to me, Vimukto Maam Upaishyasi means you will go to Ayodhya Dham. In the spiritual world also there is Ayodhya Dham. In spiritual world there is Vaikuntha Dham also. You could go there. But maybe Krishna is traveling outside. That those are not his primary residences. So that's why it is said this is not the topmost result. Because these are not, these are wonderful places to be. Hey, what, what's greater than to be in Vaikunt Dham? But there is a higher destination. 
which is in Krishna's heart and Krishna being in your heart. That is his permanent residence, PR. Rest everything is temporary residence or secondary residence. So that's why 9.29 is such an important verse. So for my bhakta, Lord Krishna is saying, ye bhajante tumam bhaktya mai te te shu chapya. He favors his devotees. Otherwise, if you are being a good person, punya, karmi, okay, you will get your result of punya, you will enjoy in swarga, you will do this, you will do that. Life is going on. The whole universe is in balance. Are you following? So there he is not, you know, he is uh, acting neutrally. But to his dear devotees, he is severely partial. Look at Pandavas. Even though he gave his whole army to the Kauravas, didn't even fight, lift a weapon for the Pandavas. Still, without even lifting the weapon, without even one extra soldier that he brought from his side, he single-handedly helped the Pandavas to win the war, isn't it? Every single situation when they were in trouble, who helped? Right from the beginning, there is not one important battle within the war. Battles are like the sub-wars. The, that Krishna did not play the crucial, critical role, isn't it? Bhishma, Jayadrath, Drona, Karna, all the places. He played a, even saving Parikshit, the last air, Brahmastra was shot at the womb of Uttara. He went and protected Parikshit. So even the future dynasty was protected. Everything Krishna is like without even lifting one weapon. Okay? So towards his devotees, if he wants, he can be severely partial. So that is what he is saying. That I will do anything I will take the blame also. People call names to Krishna. Oh, he made, he did all this, you know, hanky-panky. So what? So what if the world dislikes me, disrespects me? I don't care about the world. My devotee, my bhakta, I will not let him down. Krishna has their back. So if you want this, then the answer is simple. Engage in Krishna Bhakti. All right. That is the message of Bhagavad Gita. And then he makes a very, he just, you will see a lot of repetition. Okay. But the point is Krishna is just driving the point home. He just, you know, he wants you to get it in different, different ways. He's saying it. The extent of Krishna's love, you can see here. 30 and 31. There he says, so please read these two. I'll read these two verses. Api chetsu durácharo bhajante maam ananya bhaak sadhur eva samanta vyaha samyag vyavasthito hi saha. I will explain what it all means, okay? Next, kshipram bhavati dharmatma Shashvat Shantim Nigachati Kaunteya Pratijani Name Bhakta Pranashyati. Very, very important verse, two verses. They go as a set of two. So, what is being said? Apichet Sudura Charo Bhajante Maam Ananyabha. He's saying that even if somebody does something bad, my devotee, not somebody, sorry, take it back. Not somebody, my devotee. Bhajante Maam Ananyabha, one who is doing my Ananya Bhajan. My constant uh, exclusive bhajan of me, one who is doing. But somehow, accidentally, if he makes a mistake, does something bad. Sadhur evasa mantavya. He is to be considered saintly because he is my devotee. Kshipram bhavati dharmatma. Very quickly, he comes to the correct path. Kshipram means very quickly, without delay. Okay? Shashvat Shantim Nigachati and he becomes absolved of the reactions of anything wrong that he did. 
this is the main line kaunteya pratijani hi kaunteya who is kaunteya arjun pratijani hi go and declare it pratijani hi means with a band baja jaise kehte hain na dig 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 maharaj aa rahe hain like an announcement go announce it to the whole world न मे भक्त प्रणश्यति माय भक्त इज नेवर डिस्ट्रॉयड नश्यति प्रणश्यति मींस उसका नाश नहीं होता न मे भक्त प्रणश्यति ही माय डिवोटी इज नेवर 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 डिस्ट्रॉयड व्हाई इज ही टेलिंग अर्जुन टू गो डिक्लेयर इट देयर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट हां Arjun is a bhakt. Fine, he could have declared it himself. I declare. Aham pratijani hi. Why does he say kaunte ya? Aham. He could have said. He could have said. Na me bhakt ha pranashyati. This is a very important point. He is telling that Arjun, you go and say it, because Lord Krishna, he may go back on his word. But if his devotee makes a promise. krishna will bend backwards to keep it so his devotee making a promise to the world is a stronger bond you know is a triple a bond what do you call it? triple plus a plus plus bond then he himself promising he is krishna is closing all back doors he is giving a complete blank check na me bhakta pranashyati and he is making arjuna say this now krishna has no way out my devotee has said it because if he does not protect his devotee now who will people blame arjuna or krishna hmm who will they blame they will blame arjun you said that krishna will protect his devotees now your words have been uh, falsified can krishna tolerate that he can never tolerate his devotee being uh, accused or blamed he can tolerate him being blamed anyway people blame him day and night so many people blame krishna but he can tolerate that easily no problem shishupal also he gave 100 chances you can abuse me no problem but to his devotee he cannot tolerate so that is why he is making arjun say this it's a the point is it's a very strong promise krishna is making a devotee fully engaged in my bhakti never falls down okay please try to understand this how much krishna is saying i have your back in the previous verse sammoham sarvabhuteshu he said that even though i am neutral in general to everyone to my devotee i am severely partial again here is he is saying my devotee i always have his back he never falls down even if he commits an accidental offense since he is doing my bhajan with full focus he quickly comes back on the right path are you following i make him come to the right path there are two very nice examples of this in the shrimad bhagavatam one example is that of indra you all remember know the govardhan pastime the govardhan leela so indra accidentally got pride in his heart that these people i am not going to narrate the whole story but these people you know used to worship me now based on krishna is they are beginning to worship this govardhan hill why should i let them worship govardhan hill and then he sends the rain and thunder and all that so if that person is indra is a good devotee of krishna momentary you know kabhi kabhi dimag thoda khisak jata hai sometimes you know the mind is uh, uh, what do you say uh, you must have also seen sometimes you know you say no i will not get angry but then something you know your pride or your ahankar gets impacted so much 
in an instant you just you know and then you regret are kyun kiya apne you know i made you know you think but that's that inst- indra's ahankar was impacted because his worship was immediately given to someone else it's like you know a plate of nice food is coming to you and suddenly the waiter turns and gives it to the guy next to you <laughs> i thought it's coming for me and <laughs> it's going to somebody else so he got very angry so that was a accidental fall down for demons krishna lets them continue their offensive activities he doesn't stop them because then the offenses rise to a level when they really have to be given a very severe punishment but in case of indra immediately krishna stopped him in a very very like a glamorous way like a very dramatic way he lifted the govardhan hill that was the sort of the in his whole life that was the most dramatic action he had taken till that point he killed this demon that demon and all that but even the residents of vrindavan began thinking who is this boy till then they were like okay maybe that demon had a heart attack it looked like you know krishna killed him but maybe he just had a heart attack but go lifting govardhan hill kind of made them doubt so he had to do to great he had to go to great extent to correct indra are you following but he did that because indra is a devotee so that is one example there is another example from the shrimad bhagavatam where brahma ji stole the the calves and the his friends i won't go into the details but very quickly he corrected brahma also who is a very good devotee of krishna you following so he quickly comes back on the right path so krishna is making a very very bold promise here that what is the promise a devotee who is fully engaged okay this promise krishna is making only for those devotees who are very very sincere fully engaged what is the proof here from bhagavad gita he is saying bhajate api chet su durachara sometimes durachar durachar means durachar bad behavior that's the meaning of durachar api chet su durachara but bhajante mam ananya bhag otherwise other than that mistake ananya bhag means ananya he is doing single focused bhajan of me okay for that that is the qualifying criteria that sadhur eva samantavya he is to be considered as good as a sadhu kshipram bhavati dharmatma very quickly he comes back to the right path okay due to his own uh mindset because he is a devotee he is not a demon plus krishna arranges that he comes back so there is a pull as well and there is a push also from krishna both ways the end result it is very quickly comes back on the right path are you all following with me i may be over explaining but so is krishna he also kind of is repeating the point that the main point is i have got my devotees back don't worry become my devotee i got your back that's what he is saying all right and then he is saying who can become my devotee who can become his devotee okay. anybody no qualification is needed even a dog can become a devotee but we are at least talking about human beings right now doesn't matter black or white man or woman rich or poor or you know uh, anything so no one is exempt from krishna bhakti no one absolutely no one so here we will see maam hi partha vyapashritya ye api syu papayo nah योनय स्त्रिओ वैश्यस्तथा शूद्रे स्थि अति परा गतिम सो वॉट हिज सेंग इज दैट 
whether one has a lot of karmic baggage or not it doesn't matter first of all your bodily category doesn't matter whether you are striya vaishya shudra brahmana kshatriya doesn't matter and by the way also he is saying or any other syu papa yonaha yonayaha papa yonayaha means a low birth so yes he is talking about a birth but how does one get a lower birth why does one become a shudra not a brahman by quality okay but how is one a shudra or a brahman karma by his past karma the karma goes across lifetimes otherwise you know then there is no law of karma so karma law of karma spans across lifetimes so lower birth is due to past karmic accumulation only so yes he is talking about even your present lower birth and you may be in a unfortunate situation in your present body whatever may be the social show social circumstances today you know blacks may be considered lower whites may be considered more powerful who knows 500 years 1000 years from now the situation could change the blacks may be more powerful and the whites may be the oppressed the point being that whatever are the current social conditions it doesn't matter everybody is shudra ste te api yantim param gatim that is the main point so what are the main points if one has mam hi partha vyapa ashritya partha is arjuna mam hi he is another important word he means mam hi mere hi paas aaya hai hindi mein bolte hain na kya matlab hai mere hi paas aaya it means kisi aur ke paas nahi gaya exclusivity is being emphasized here mam hi me only vyapa ashritya he has taken my shelter only not like double insurance i am insured through my my own employer's plan plus i am insured through my wife's employer's plan i have double medical insurance people do that sometimes oh this insurance will not pay i will use the other insurance lord krishna is saying no other place only my shelter those who have taken mam hi partha vyapashritya So if one has taken my complete and only my shelter then anyone who has done no categorized no eligibility needed no other eligibility needed this is the only eligibility yanti param gatim can reach the highest destination there is no discrimination anyone can attain the highest and therefore he is saying and the next this is also a set kim punar brahmana ampunya bhaktya rajarshaya tatha so kshatriya rajas all the kingly class the kshatriyas brahmanas anityam asukham lokam prapya bhajaswama therefore anityam having taken this human body while in this world anityam asukham lokam this world is what <coughs> anityam and asukham lokam prapya you have obtained it aren't you here okay then the best thing to do while you are here is bhajaswamam do my bhajan so therefore while here that's the purpose krishna is in this verse giving us the purpose of our life do my bhajan how much more clearly can he say this hmm that while you are here just engaged as your topmost you don't have to you know forget other things but this should be our primary activity and one more last verse of this chapter 9.34 if you still don't get it 
one final time Krishna is going to say again. Some people just don't get it. One more final time Krishna says, this is another very important verse. Man mana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maam evaishyasi yuktvaivam atmanam mat parayanaha that always there are four things he is saying always keep me in your mind mad manaha man means in your mind mat means keep me put me in your mind mad manaha bhava mad bhakto become my devotee bhav mad bhakto mad yaji worship me respect me maam namaskuru why if you do all this then you will if you do if you fully engage in my bhakti mat parayanaha if you are always engaged in my bhakti maam evashyasi you will come to me so what does this make krishna sound like is he like a narcissist come to me come to me come to me worship me respect me is that the meaning why is he saying all this so many times now we have covered the last verse of ninth chapter so let's go back and review what is he saying here time where we started today just love me is basically saying love me offer me some little chocolate here chocolate there like we gave the example of chocolate box but add love basically he's saying love me isn't it next whatever you do yad karoshi yad ashnashi yad juhoshi dadashi yad yad tapasyasi konte ya tad kurushwa madarpana whatever you are doing just keep me in your mind do it as offering to me always think of me he is basically desperate for our love of our attention he is attention hungry you can say of our attention and then he is saying what he will give in result he is promising making lot of promises if you do this i will you know give you the highest benefit the highest one i will always live in your heart you will always have a temporary home in my heart if everybody else discards you don't worry you will have a home in my heart you can always come and live here like a father says to a child no are if anybody if you lose your job or if this happens that happens always you can come in here and stay always your room will always be free nobody i will will keep your room locked any day you come you can open your room and stay it will be untouched as it is as you left it isn't it many parents do that if they have that luxury they keep the child's home as it is uh, the room even though he doesn't live there isn't it so basically he's saying just love me love me love me that's what he's saying you know no eligibility needed just you know the only thing is since he is doing my bhajan with full focus then even if you make a mistake no problem it's okay i will never let you fall down no one is exempt exempt only thing is maam hi vyapashritya that's the only criteria just take my shelter so much he is repeating take my shelter love me always think of me same thing he is saying always think of me become my devotee respect me worship me so the question is what kind of a father does this show krishna to be any thoughts one word adjectives kind kind loving. okay loving. any loving kind caring. some more caring okay a little more like a and who has the best of the child at his heart like okay the who cares for the child or who has the best intention anything else well being hmm well being of the child. caring for the child and even if i have to use some little bit bad word or not a bad but little bit thing desperate father mm-hmm. huh doesn't it look like that he's desperate please child come to me my son my daughter please come come please 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 almost like begging 
Hmm? Isn't it? Am I right? Is it? Are you able to see that? The more important question is, if the father has to say so much, what kind of a son or daughter does it show us to be? Lack of obedience, yeah. not obedient. Then he doesn't have to say 200 times. Prabhuji, what are you talking? You have two children. <laughs> and I know what you do for your children. So he's asking to be obedient. Yes, yeah, so what kind of a child does it show us to be? If the father has to tell 200 times, do this, do this, do this. And if I am listening, only seeing the father saying this, what will I think about the child? <laughs> Rebellious, isn't it? Please pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Father is calling us, but we have our own priorities. Isn't it? Anything on Zoom, you can unmute and shout out if you want. So what kind of a child does it show us to be that he has to say so much, so many times? If you see a father saying so many times to give the same instruction to his child and you are seeing that father, what will you think about his son? What kind of a son he has? Huh? Doesn't listen. Incorrigible. Incorrigible. <laughs> <laughs> So that is a reflection on us. Okay, since Bhagavad Gita is meant for all of us. So do we want to be that kind of a child? So that is Krishna's call to us. Okay. So that is the end of, so please realize this. This is the main message of Bhagavad Gita. So we have completed ninth chapter and this is the main most important chapter of Bhagavad Gita. These last 50 minutes, it is 550 right now, are the most important section of Bhagavad Gita that we have covered today in the last 50 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever. Okay. So please take a minute or two and internalize this in your heart and see if you have any questions, discussions. Otherwise, we'll pause and go to 10th chapter today. Okay, and in the meantime, I will see what's there on the chat. Okay, I don't see any questions on chat. Please think about it. Otherwise, we can start 10th chapter. Okay, so if no questions, no problem. I'm a good teacher, so I don't expect questions. I have explained everything nicely, huh? No, no. I just have a thought. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so even after, I'm just joking. <laughs> you should have questions. Even after so, uh, you know, concrete uh, words have come out of God's mouth, how did the our, our ancestors and, you know, how did we move out of that path and ancestors you know, no i mean we like, as in, know, in different previous like, bodies you mean no no uh, like like my parents and okay my and forefathers uh -huh. how did they not enforce this idea into our brains i mean uh, at least, you know, until now this hasn't been communicated by my forefathers of my parents i uh, can say that I don't know about your fathers and parents, but maybe their fathers, somewhere it got broken. Yeah, so how did it My father was very strongly trying to, but in his lifetime, I could not uh, uh, make him happy by showing him that I am reading and understanding Bhagavad Gita and now even teaching. 
he passed away thinking that he has a rascal for a child. I'm sure he would have been much happier to see me in this uh, form now. But wherever he is, I'm so my father tried very much. And that I can tell you, even though he didn't see the result at that time when he was alive, he passed away 20 years ago. The water that he poured, the whatever the it it absolutely laid the foundation. The seed or the, the sapling didn't sprout, but it was growing inside. Okay. So you need to go back in your ancestry or whatever and see where it got now you're are you doing that with your children today trying to or are you doing as much as you should let me put it dif differently yeah, that's the point. Yeah. That's the so if you're not then it's acceptable that maybe your father didn't or their father didn't somewhere it got broken okay so that is why it is very important very very important to spend time in imparting this to our children. It's very, very important. I'll say this, even I have seen many devotees, very nice devotees, who are themselves very nice devotees, but I see that they are not doing enough to pass it on to their children. So somehow that thing, aspect of their life hasn't clicked. That it's not only important for me to do my own bhakti, but also my children are an equally important responsibility to pass it on to them as well. A child is like a student. He's like a, a student who has taken admission in your, in your school. You invited the child, isn't it? He, doesn't, he didn't appear out of nowhere. So you admitted the child in the school. Now you are not teaching him the subjects. What kind of a school is that? You should not have uh, opened your school for admission. You opened the school for admission, isn't it? So now it's your duty to teach the child what you are supposed to teach in a school. So somewhere somebody was irresponsible. And we know we are responsible in many, many areas. Imparting to a child is very, very, very important. We collectively fail. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, As a society, yeah. yes. When enough number of people do that, that individually, in that sentence that we collectively failed as a society, there is some element of some smell I'm getting of sort of not taking responsibility. The society is made up of individuals. And if in, in specific, specifically in this case, you cannot blame it on the system where you are bound. I'm talking very practically. Giving spiritual education to the child is a topic very close to my heart. I also have children and all that. This is not something as a society, we should let it be handled by the society. We have the opportunity to take it in our own hands. It is possible. There are many other things which is not possible to take in our own hands. Okay, like, I don't know what example I can give. Let's say taxes. Let us just say that you are fed up of paying so many taxes. So much tax, whatever. I'm just making a point here. But you have to. There's, otherwise, they'll put you in jail. Okay, it's like, you know, system is so expensive. Why do we have all these 200 expenses as a collective country for which I have to pay the tax? You can ask all those questions, but it's the system. You kind of end of the day, you pretty much like I'm literally throwing up my hands. You throw up your hands and you have, you kind of claim uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? You claim, uh, huh? not immunity. I mean, um, like I can't do anything. You give up. Yeah. But in this particular case, even though, yes, there's a school system and this and that, you can take things in your own hands. And what I mean is, yes, the children go to school. There is a system, but they go to school for six hours. In 24 hours, the remaining 18 hours, they are with you. Okay, you take out eight hours out of 18 in sleeping. Remaining 10 hours, they are with you awake. So what are we doing in that time? 
with our children so parents duty is very very important and another aspect which i am very strong about is homeschooling you can also homeschool your child so you don't have to depend on the external education system plus you get back those six prime hours of the day those six hours that he spends in the school are the prime hours of the day where he's fresh and you know the morning or daytime hours because after coming back from school they are tired and you know whatever they want to you, you don't have that much opportunity to then engage in a healthy conversation you cannot say oh let's read bhagavad gita he'll say oh i don't want to read i'm tired so homeschooling is a very important uh, you know you can take the system in your hand in this case you cannot say oh i will pay my own taxes i don't need the roads thank you don't build a road in front of my house but i won't pay tax that's not possible but here you can say i'm not going to send my child to school i will teach in my own home gurukul now that's a very extreme it's not for everybody so i don't want to make anybody feel bad if they are not doing this even those who are sending to school can do more than what they are doing i am saying that we are just too busy the point is not that oh i can't home school no that's just like a bonus icing on the cake the base foundation is what you can do as parents if your children are a priority for you many parents don't make that a priority for them or they are not even aware that this should be a priority they think everything is good and materially they are good american education for example is not bad especially college education is one of the best in the world everybody comes from everywhere else in the world to study in american colleges and the school system is also not that bad and if you are not satisfied with the school so public school system send to private school or whatever so the point is that it is a matter of priority we have to make spiritual progress priority in our life otherwise materially this is good system america has produced the best scientists the best uh, even you know look at the nobel prizes i'm sure america will be at the top of the list in all the recipients so no it's a good thing but spiritually yes so we have to do more as parents is what i would say okay anything else okay i'm getting all your messages queen so thank you for your messages okay so we will stop our uh, recording here and we'll start with 10th chapter don't go away on zoom i'm going to stop recording and we'll start another recording so that i can post it as a fresh recording of the 10th chapter okay so we'll pretend as if it's a new class all right so don't go away i'm just going to start again we'll do the mangala acharan and we'll start with chapter 10 everybody clear hey krishna